Today I return to my Garden Myths series to talk about Senate Document Number 264. This document is often referenced in support of the idea that most soils are deficient in minerals and require remineralization with products like rock dust. But is Senate Document Number 264 a credible source? And should I be making any decisions in my garden based on it? Let's take a closer look. Senate Document 264 is indeed a government document. It's part of the Congressional Record and you can find it on the U.S. Senate's website. People who reference it when promoting products often tout its status as a government document, implying that this gives it special credibility, but this is not the case. Senate document number 264 is not a Department of Agriculture or a university study. Instead, it's a popular science article written by Rex Beach and published in Cosmopolitan magazine in 1936. That's right, it's a Cosmo article. So how did this Cosmo article make it into the congressional record? In 1936, Senator Duncan Fletcher, Democrat from Florida, apparently found the article noteworthy and asked that it be added. It's very important to note, however, that any senator can ask for anything to be put in the record, regardless of merit. Being part of the congressional record does not lend the article any credibility. And from a scientific perspective, the article is not considered useful or relevant as a scientific reference. Now let's take a closer look at the article. It features Dr. Charles Northern, a medical doctor who advocated returning minerals to degraded soils. I'll read directly from the article to give you a better idea of its content. Do you know that most of us today are suffering from certain dangerous diet deficiencies which cannot be remedied until the depleted soils from which our foods come are brought into proper mineral balance? The alarming fact is that foods, fruits and vegetables and grains now being raised on millions of acres of land that no longer contains enough of certain needed minerals are starving us, no matter how much of them we eat. It is bad news to learn from our leading authorities that 99% of the American people are deficient in these minerals and that a marked deficiency in any one of the more important minerals actually results in disease. I find many of the points made in this article to be questionable, and certainly some of them are not true today. For example, it's not true that 99% of Americans suffer from mineral deficiencies. But rather than delve into all the details, let's look at a few points on which we agree. Dr. Northern was certainly right that it's very important that soils contain all the essential and beneficial mineral elements for plant growth. This is important for plant and human health. I'll also concede that trace amounts of some of the remaining elements may provide benefits that have yet to be discovered. Finally, he was right that millions of acres of agricultural lands were in very bad condition at the time of the article. But none of this means that you and I need to run out and buy mineral amendments for our gardens. To better understand why agricultural soils were so depleted in the 1930s, you have to consider the historical context. In the 1930s, severe drought and years of unsustainable agricultural practices led to the Dust Bowl. Fertile topsoil was lost to erosion and dust storms that blew dust from the Great Plains all the way to the East Coast. This phenomenon afflicted millions of acres of agricultural land from Montana and North Dakota down to Texas and was one of the worst environmental disasters in American history. So it is true that during the Dust Bowl, millions of acres of agricultural lands were unfit for crops or livestock. But what does this mean for our gardens today? Fortunately, most of our gardens bear little resemblance to the Dust Bowl. And it would be a mistake to simply assume, based on this article, that we have mineral deficiencies in our soil without first having the soils tested. The good news is that most soils contain all the elements needed to support life. And most of the time, compost alone can supply them when they are deficient. But let's consult an expert from today, rather than a Cosmo article from the 1930s. In The Truth About Garden Remedies, horticulturist Dr. Jeff Gilman says, Most soils contain the elements that support plant life. If they didn't, the earth wouldn't have forests. And compost added to a garden will reduce the need for fertilizers and should supply the micronutrients required for normal plant growth. And finally, for people who use organic fertilizers or compost, an application of micronutrients is often a waste of money. Now let's take a closer look at some of what Senate document number 264 says about malnutrition in the United States. Dr. Northern described an epidemic of malnutrition, which he attributed entirely to mineral deficiencies in our food supply. Now it's true that malnutrition was a serious problem in the 1930s, but can it be attributed entirely to mineral deficiencies in the soil, or were there other factors at play? Once again, it's important to consider the historical context. 
In 1936, we were in the midst of a worldwide depression known as the Great Depression. In the United States, the unemployment rate was as high as 25%. Thousands of people lost their homes. And hunger and malnutrition were fairly common because people often couldn't afford to buy food. However, the article completely ignores this elephant in the room. It never mentions the terrible economic conditions of the time. And in an extreme case of tunnel vision, attributes the problem of malnutrition entirely to mineral deficient soil. So what's the takeaway for home gardeners? Should we simply assume that our garden soil is deficient in minerals without even having it tested? Absolutely not. And this brings me to a point on which Dr. Northern and I agree on completely. First determine by analysis the precise chemistry of any given soil, then correct the deficiencies by putting down enough of the missing elements to restore its balance. Unfortunately, people who cite Dr. Northern's work to promote products often ignore this important advice entirely. So if you're still convinced that Senate Document 264 means that your soil may be deficient in minerals, I strongly encourage you to follow Dr. Northern's advice and have a soil test first before applying amendments. In our case, the soil test this spring showed no deficiencies in any of the elements tested. And Stephen from Alberta Urban Garden last fall did a soil test that was much more extensive covered a wider range of elements and also found no deficiencies. And I should note that there's nothing special about my garden soil or Stevens. If you use compost, mulch, and maybe worm castings, you're likely to have similar results. If you simply assume there are mineral deficiencies and blindly apply rock dust or some other amendment, there's a good chance you're throwing away your money. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.